the age-old question. To buy on release or not? In the case of Nintendo games, the answer is often surprisingly simple. Before I satisfy your curiosity, if you enjoy my videos, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new ones. Also, feedback is always appreciated, so feel free to leave some in the comments down below. In which of the following categories do you fall when it comes to getting new games? Are you pre-ordering? Hoping for a pre-release surprise in your mailbox? Do you hit the shops as soon as possible? Are you waiting a couple days to see what other players think? Maybe you just buy the virtual version online to skip all the hassle. Or are you one of those impressively patient people that can wait till a game eventually becomes cheaper? The latter might work in most cases, but not always with Nintendo games. Want an example? Super Smash Bros. Melee. The GameCube grandfather of the new Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was a massive hit. Me and my friends played it basically non-stop after its release in 2002. And I thankfully still have a working disc. There are tons of copies out there, so the games aren't exactly rare. But even used versions don't come cheap at around 50 euros. And if I would, for some insane reason, want a factory sealed German version, I could currently buy one of eBay for the low, low price of 300 euros. What a steal! Nintendo only produces a specific amount of physical game copies. Millions of them. But the supply decreases continuously. At one point, there are none left. And how many people sell their Nintendo games? In the case of Pokémon, for example, you bond with the creatures you catch. And giving away a Pokédex I spent ages to complete? I'd rather not. Because a lot of people think that way, used copies are rather rare and expensive. You can't just buy a game back if you're ever in the mood again for a couple bucks. And there's more than one series with such a stable market value. Games starring Mario, Link, Samus Aran or Donkey Kong are equally as interesting as a potential investment. What do they have in common? They are all Nintendo exclusives. The company follows an, in this day and age, rather unusual marketing strategy, trying to actively work against the devaluation of its products. While you might be able to buy a fantastic game like The Witcher 3 at a bargain price during a sale, the same will almost never happen to a game with Mario Kart or Super Smash Bros. in the title. Nintendo games are known to be innovative, polished, accessible and rather timeless in their looks and mechanics. Many attempt to copy this recipe for success, but nothing really compares. Even non-gamers are able to recognize Nintendo's famous mascots and I'm sure most of you will agree that it's far easier to get someone to play a round of Mario Party rather than convince them to give Dark Souls a shot. The Japanese enterprise has cultivated a loyal customer base that is ready to pay almost any price for that fabled Nintendo quality. The fact that they only release their big IPs on their own consoles only adds to the price stability. They couldn't make up for lower prices by re-releasing a game for PS4, PC or Xbox One. Their whole income is generated through one, or in rare cases, two consoles. For a completely contrary example, look no further than Skyrim, whose availability on each and every platform reached a point where even its own developers at Bethesda joke about it. Late Nintendo president Satoru Iwata is part of this whole phenomenon. He repeatedly mentioned that it worries him how a lot of studios burn their employees out with crunch time and tight schedules and then still release unfinished games. Iwata thought it important to not let us consumers forget how much work goes into a game. And the unchanging high price point acts as a constant reminder. In a nutshell, if you're interested in basically any Nintendo exclusive game, you might as well go ahead and buy it. It won't get much cheaper and reselling a physical copy is pretty easy. Maybe you'll be able to get a better deal when they eventually republish best-selling games as part of the company's Nintendo Selects program, but when and if that will happen for Switch games is still anybody's guess. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Hope your day's as good as gold. See you next time.